श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम उपनिषद शब्देन ब्रह्म विद्या उच्यते बाय द वर्ड उपनिषद व्हाट इज मेंट इज द ब्रह्म विद्या एंड व्हाट इज ब्रह्म विद्या ब्रह्म विद्या इज रेकग्निशन ऑफ वन सेल्फ टू बी द इन्फिनिट अनक्रिएटेड अनएंडिंग एब्सोल्यूट कॉन्शियस ब्लिसफुल रियालिटी दिस रेकग्निशन इज कॉल्ड एज ब्रह्म विद्या and therefore vedanta does not mean the end of knowledge end of knowledge is ignorance vedanta means the ultimate in knowledge anta is the sima the ultimate there is nothing more that is remaining to be known beyond this so upanishad this word is formed by adding two prefixes to the root called as shad upa plus ni plus shad becomes upanishad upa means near ni means with commitment and this dhatu or the root shad means shad means gati avasaran and himsa these are the three meanings of this root gati means destination what is the ultimate destination of our being second is our sadhanam loosening weakening this knowledge will weaken the impact of the relative world and third thing the himsa means destruction the knowledge that destroys our wrong notions about ourselves about the world about god and about spiritual practice thus by the word upanishad what is meant is this knowledge and not the book but as you know a train going to chennai is written on that chennai so chennai is not that train it is going to reach there <clears throat> in the same manner when we say upanishad the so book is not the upanishad but it is the knowledge that is mentioned in the book so this upanishad prashna upanishad that we are studying this time belong to the atharva veda and in this atharva veda there is another upanishad which is studied normally traditionally that upanishad is called as mundaka upanishad and in that mundaka upanishad the student ask a question kasminnu bhagavo vijnyade sarvam idam vijnatam bhavati iti o lord o guru maharaj o bhagwan what is that one having known which everything becomes known this is the question in reply to that question the teacher says dve vidde veditavve parachaiva paracha there are two things two knowledge is to be known one is para vidya second is apara vidya what is apara vidya the knowledge concerning the relative world there the teacher says rugveda samaveda yajurveda atharva veda shiksha kalpa vyakaranam niruktam chandam jyotisham iti so the four vedas and the six limbs of the veda veda shadang they constitute the knowledge pertaining to the relative world and what is the knowledge pertaining to the absolute reality para yaya tat aksharam adhigamyate para vidya is that by which this undying uncreated absolute reality is revealed that is the para vidya so in mundaka upanishad this para vidya and apara vidya having told then their position was given and the ultimate paravidya is what divyo yamurta purusha 
अक्षरात परत पर The divine is defined for us to proceed in that direction. However, in that Upanishad, uh, what is the spiritual practice to be done in one's life was still remaining to be elaborated, and that aspect is taken care of in this Upanishad, because this Upanishad also belongs to the same Atharvana Veda. so like every upanishad begins with a shanti part this upanishad also begins with a shanti part now why this upanishad is called as prashna upanishad you know this is the beauty of our uh, tradition in our india like you know aarti of the lord we don't have a number given to the aarti we say what are the we should say now we should say om jay jagadish hare so the first line first word refers to that particular aarti or the song if you see the western music album they always refer number oh number 420 very good one see so upanishads are also uh, referred like that for example keno upanishad so the keno upanishad begins with the word kena kene shitam patati preshitam manaha similarly ishavasya upanishad ishavasya upanishad also begins with the same word ishavasya midam sarvam yatkincha jagatyam jagat tena tyaktena munjitha magrudha kasya siddhanam ishavasya upanishad similarly this upanishad has six questions that are dealt with because there are six questions this is called as prashna upanishad not a question upanishad it is not a questionable knowledge but it is the knowledge which is presented through six questions asked by the six seekers of truth and we will be having a six sessions as i was told by thangarajan ji therefore we will take one question per day so that we can finish the upanishad and continue to suffer om madram karane vishnuyam devah madram pashye maksha virya jatrah tirai rangai stushtu vagam sastano mih vyashem devahitam yadayuh swastina indro ruddha shravah swastina pusha vishvavedah swastina starksho arishtane mih स्वस्तिनो बृहस्पति ओम शांति 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 सो एवरी उपनिषद बिगिन्स विथ विथ द शांति पाठ ना व्हाट इज द पर्पज ऑफ द शांति पाठ पर्पज ऑफ द शांति पाठ इज वी have to establish a perfect rapport <coughs> perfect rapport among what factors <coughs> the teacher and the student they must be at the same wavelength otherwise the teacher is talking <coughs> and the students don't understand then there is no possibility of transfer of knowledge similarly the teacher is talking but the student is sleeping then also there is no transfer of knowledge possible so to establish the rapport and how is this like we call somebody on phone so when we call how do we start hello means what we want to confirm there is someone else on the other end you are not talking to a mobile phone you are talking to somebody <coughs> here also the teacher and the student invoke this perfect um what do you call rapport among them number 1 <coughs> second thing is both the teacher and the student are establishing their rapport with the lord so that all this is happening in his presence and when things are happening in his presence then the teacher cannot have the arrogance of teacherhood and the student cannot have 
the foolishness of being a student and thus remain under a pressure of relationship here only the truth has to be respected everything else is secondary in this manner <coughs> now we try to learn the meaning om is addressed to the lord o lord madram karne bhi shrunyam devaha o lord may we hear auspicious by our ears what is in our hands that we should hear suppose you go somewhere and that person starts abusing us you fool of the first order so how can you hear auspicious when somebody abuses you so the teacher tells you have to take out a positive meaning from everything that you hear see the whole attitude will change in one place <coughs> it is said those who are praising you all the time they are not your friends those who find out your faults they are your real friends because because of that only we will know our shortcomings and then only we can change ourselves but normally what happens if somebody finds out our fault then we are rebound back no therefore bhadram karne bhi chuniyam deva let us not get involved into the worldly topics wherever worldly topics are very vigorously discussed immediately go to the bathroom at least there nobody will come with you for some time and the force with which you are talking immediately goes away so bhadram karne bhi chuniyam deva bhadram pashe maksha bhirya jatra second thing <clears throat> oh worthy of worship o oh lord may we see auspicious by our eyes so what is the auspicious seeing auspicious by our eyes we see a statue <coughs> by our eyes but we recognize the divinity in that so what is the auspicious vision auspicious vision is <coughs> the perception of the sub, uh, sublime in the ridiculous the stone is the ridiculous but in that ridiculous stone we project the presence of the divine in this manner if we have taken this approach in our life the net result will be our mind will be at peace third stirai rangai stushtu vagam sastanu vihi veshema deva hitam yadayu and then oh lord may we remain healthy with our healthy body healthy limbs for what be attentive health cannot be the goal of life most of the people they get into the yoga practice etc but the goal of their life is only health health cannot be the goal of life all our terrorists bandhu they are healthy so only health cannot be then vyashema deva hitam yadayuh may our healthy life be useful for the welfare of the world around us then only that helpful is meaning uh, health is meaningful therefore vyashema deva hitam yadayuh further swastina indro vruddha shravaha this great indra who is presiding deity of our hands may he do good to us he can go do uh, good do to us if we are self sufficient lesser the help we take from somebody more healthy we remain see then second thing swastina pusha vishvavedaha pusha means the lord son may the lord son <coughs> bless us how can the lord son bless us if we wake up before the sunrise then only the lord son can bless us so our day begins early in the morning we will remain fresh and cheerful then swastina starcho arishtane mihi the one who is the destroyer of the arist obstacles in our life is the um tarksha tarksha means the fresh air or it also means the garuda the vehicle of lord vishnu 
means the words are the vehicle by which the wisdom come to us. Therefore, Tarksha, Garuda also mean Vedas. So may we study the scriptures and thus get the benefit of this knowledge and Swastin Naha Braspati Dadhatu. And may Braspati, the Guru of the Gods, bless us. That means may there be Satsanga in our life every day. See, friends. Like for the gross body, we require food. For the mind, we require sleep. In the same manner, for our buddhi intellect, we require satsanga every day. There cannot be any justification that I cannot have satsanga. There are many facilities today available. Why satsanga is so important? Because our mind can get derailed in no time. We have to remind ourselves every day. <coughs> Not a single day passes without our exposing to the satsanga. And satsanga, what we mean is not only reading the books, but it is listening to the Mahatma. And the more we listen, the more we become humble. When the knowledge is digested, it becomes wisdom. It is something like, when food is digested, it becomes power. Shakti. Similarly, when knowledge is digested, it becomes wisdom. If food is not digested, what happens? It comes out as a vomition. Undigested food. In the same manner, undigested knowledge, when it is not digested, it comes out as a vomition in the form of a lecture. This is how we give lectures. See, Bhagavan Ravana Maharshi never gave lecture. All the great masters keep their mouth shut. And those who are CH Atma, they go on giving lectures. Narayana. So, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. The Shanti refers to various ways. We will take only one way. The Shanti refers to the three bodies. First is the gross body. Let our gross body be available to us when it is required. There are three problems with the gross body. Alistha Nidra Pramad. Laziness, excessive sleep and Pramad repeating the same mistake again and again. So may this gross body be not a problem for us. Secondly is, second Chanti, the subtle body. Let our wrong notions be not justified and the mind is disciplined and well educated, with a disciplined and educated mind alone, we can know the truth. And the third one is the, uh, the current sharira, the causal body, which is non-recognition of our own divine nature. So may these three bodies be quietened and we come to discover our essential nature. Thus, this Shanti part establishes rapport between the teacher and the student, etc. Now, Atharvada Mantrokta Arth, um, Mantrokta Arthasya Vistara Anuvaditam Brahmanaha Arab Brahmanam Arabhyate. What was said in the Munduka Upanishad, the, the same thought is being continued in this Upanishad. Rushi Prashna Prativachana Akhyaya Kathu Vidyastate. This Upanishad is presented in the form of Akhyaika. Akhyaika means a popular story. By this popular story, what happens? One is able to refer to something instantaneously without going much into the detail. Like, you know, when somebody says, the seeker should be like Nachiket. Now that word, one Nachiket, and those who know the story of Nachiketa, everything is said in one word. See, you don't have to go on explaining every time. In the same manner, Akhyaikas are those <coughs> which help us in getting the right communication in few words. So, the Rishis was approached by the student. Evam samatsara brahmacharya samvadadi yuktaihi tayopahi yuktaihi graya pippaladis 
व सर्वज्ञ कल्पै ही आचार्य वक्तव्या च नसा येन केन कदाचित विद्या स्तौति एंड द स्टोरी गो दैट देर वॉज सिक्स स्टूडेंट्स हू अप्रोच द ग्रेट ऋषि मास्टर कॉल एज विद बाय दिस वॉट दे मीन दैट द नॉलेज कैनॉट बी गिवन बाय एनी टॉम डिक कैन हैरी सी वी ऑल हैव एक्सपीरियंस दिस थिंग इन अवर लाइफ वेन समबडी टेल्स it doesn't make any impact on our heart but when some other person tells one word can change our life so what is the difference between the two words are the same but in case of the former the words do not carry the meaning in case of the latter the words carry the meaning and therefore the words of those who are living this knowledge alone can change our life their word is said not yena kena any tom dick and harry cannot give this knowledge by merely reading the books one has to leave this therefore uh, brahmacharya di sadhana suchana cha tat kartavya tasya and then the teacher tells the students you have to be disciplined etc so these are the two aspects this is how in his introduction bhagwan shankar said now we start the upanishad by the first mantra you can just observe there are there are very really long mantra there is no point in reading om sukesha cha bharadwaja shaibyascha satyakamaha sauryayani cha gargya kausalyascha ashvalayana bhargavo vaidarvi kabandhi katyayana ऐते ब्रह्म परा ब्रह्मनिष्ठा परम ब्रह्म अन्वेषवाण ईश हवै तत्सर्व वक्षती तेह सण भगवत पिप्पलाद उपसन्ना संस्कृत लैंग्वेज इवन इफ यू डोंट नो सिंपली मिस एन इट इट इज सो एंटिंग यू नो इट इज ओनली द संस्कृत लैंग्वेज विच इज एक्सट्रीमली um worked out to the last detail every letter has got its origin in no other language this explanation is given like you know the a a e u a i o a o r o l o am aha ka kha ga gha every letter has got a place every letter has got a presiding deity every letter has got a mantra shakti see and therefore even if we do not recog- understand even if we simply chant very slowly and sit, not a mechanical way om mantram karne ve yam deva mantram shema kavi dera no slowly and steadily all these mantras will <coughs> cool us down even the any sound that we produce comes to us in the form of the sound waves and when those sound waves are perfectly uttered that will cool down all the agitations of the mind so if sometime you are agitated etc take some uh, like you know bhagavad gita but don't start uh, chanting mechanically tarvangendra guru ke jay hone ka ayu to ama ama kaanda vaacha ye ha ha sit cool before the lord and start it will definitely cool you down this is what i have experience and you can also try. नौ सुखेशा चमत भारद्वाज स आपत्य भारद्वाज शैप्य शिवे अपत्यम शैप्य सत्य कामो नाम सौरयाणी सूर्य तस् आपत्यम सौर्य तस्पत्यम सौरयाणी छंद सहसि गार्ग्य नौ दीज आर द सिक्स स्टूडेंट्स हू अप्रोच दिस ग्रेट मास्टर कॉल्ड एज द पिप्पलाद पिप्पलाद वाज अ ग्रेट मास्टर who were those people one was Sh- sukesha second was shaipya uh, satya kama third was sauryani gargya fourth was kaushalya ashvalayana fifth was gar- bhargavo vaidarvi and sixth was kan- kavandhi katyayana now they have lived their life in a proper way and then they had this inquiry kindled in their mind what was that param brahma anveshamana in avdhuta gita the first mantra is ishvara anugraha deva pum samadvaita vasana it is by the divine grace alone we are prompted to study upanishad 
and seek the absolute and what is the study of upanishad or the seeking the absolute mahat bhaya paritranat vipranam upajayate because this is the only knowledge we can which can free us from the terrible fear of this relative existence and for whom it is again vipranam upajayate vipra means what in manusmriti this word is defined janmana jayate shudraha samskara dvija uchyate vidabhyasi bhavet vipraha brahma janati brahmana by birth we are all shudra shudra means what not our government's definition shudra means shrill caste shudra means those who are constantly complaining and crying they are called as shudra so children are called as shudra all the time gang 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 like that then samskara dvija uchyate so then some samskara are given to them yagyo pavit etc so they become dvija twice born now they are not merely the children of human being but now they are belonging to a cultured society where everything is taught how to talk how to sit how to do the prayers etc samskara dvija uchyate second birth then veda bhyasi bhavet vipraha then only studying the worldly knowledge is not enough we have to have the spiritual knowledge imparted to us right from the childhood such a person is called as vipra and if we have really studied and lived that knowledge in our life we will definitely have dispassion for the worldly things and when we have dispassion for the worldly things then alone we can think of the absolute reality otherwise we cannot think and this alone can liberate us from all the problems so these four six students they have lived their life and then um, brahma para brahma para means they have lived their life according to the scriptural injunctions and they had no more now attraction towards the worldly things now they have inquiry in their mind and what was the inquiry param brahma anveshamana now they wanted to know the absolute reality what it is so seeking that te sarvam havai tat sarvam mokshati iti now they came to real, uh, recognize that pipala the muni is one he is definitely able to communicate with us therefore there are two types of teachers one type of teachers are following the path of avadhuta and second type of teachers are the acharya acharya are shrotriya brahmanishta they are well read in the scriptures and they are abiding in that knowledge if somebody is only well read in the scriptures but not abiding in the knowledge he becomes erudite scholar only will never be able to communicate with the student because you know those who have studied objectively even the scriptures they always answer the question why is people they don't answer the question they answer the person basic difference who is address in the material world it is the question is address on the spiritual path it is the person that is address and this cannot be done by anybody unless one is established in the truth therefore they knew that this people are the rishi will definitely help us and therefore they approach samit panaya the same word comes in mundoga upanishad tad vijnanartham guru meva amigachet samit panihi shrotriyam brahmanishtam so to know the truth one should approach the shrotriya brahmanishta guru samit pani samit pani means carrying dry twigs in their hand so this dried twigs means what earlier days this rishi is to be busy in teaching the students etc their wife will be taking care of cooking and all that then who will work for them getting the dry wood and then the vegetables etc so the disciples is to work for them and therefore whenever they is to go they will be carrying a you know load of dry wood so which can be used for the yagya and for cooking etc this is the meaning one meaning second meaning is dry wood means what it is so dry that little spark of fire is enough to make it into fire 
in the same manner these disciples are now absolutely dispassionate they don't have the smoke of questions coming out of the relative world whenever you put a you know wet wood in the fire first the smoke comes and what is the smoke only question no but why it is so i have done everything for everybody but nobody likes me question such a person is not qualified for the spiritual knowledge we have no questions we have no problems we have no complaints then only we can think of god therefore samit panaya they have carried the right trees in their hand and bhagavantam vipaladam upasannaha and they approach the teacher recognizing him equivalent to bhagwan himself <coughs> this is another important thing we all must have done sometime in our school or college that teacher whom we do not like we do not like even the subject we do not like to learn from him in the same manner if we do not have a respectful attitude toward the teacher that the teacher is none other than parmatma himself then alone we will be available and we will learn otherwise we will be all the time arguing within our mind sometimes these people say like this thing sometimes they say like that the other teacher said like that he is seeing like this so inside there is always a quarrel going on such a quarreling tom can never know the truth therefore bhagavan tam paladam upasannaha now see the words upasanna upanishad same word so upasannaha the approach with all humility sincerity dedication devotion etc and after having so this is how one has to approach the teacher if one really wants to know the truth unlike you know many times people ask us on phone or they will be just coming uh, you see them on airport oh swami is very good i was thinking about knowing something meditation till there is a time for announcement for departure can you tell me something about meditation yes i can tell you the spelling of it for everything there is a place there is a time that we don't recognize because we are so overpowered by our doubts or question we have no time to go and spend for that so they thus approach and te samit pana samit samit bhara grihit hastaha santaha bhagavantam pippaladam upasanna they upajagmuhu they approach now when they approach what did the guru maharaj pippalad muni did <coughs> तान स ऋषिवाच भूय एव तपसा ब्रह्मचर्येण श्रद्धया संवत्सर संवत्सत यथा काम प्रश्ना पृछत यदि विज्ञा विज्ञा श्याम सर्व हवो वक्षाम तान स ऋषिवाच वेन दी सिक्स स्टूडेंट्स अप्रोच टू देम द ऋषि महाराज सेड भूय एव तपसा भूय मीस अगेन i know you have come to me to ask something you cannot be ordinary student because otherwise you would have gone to some other person where in your desires are fulfilled be very attentive we approach the doctor for what for getting the disease uh, medicines similarly most of us have approach the mahatmas for getting the problems of our life sorted out my wife is like that my husband is like that my children are like that my business is like that this is what is our approach and fulfillment of the desires through the mahatma that become the goal of the life now here the students are unlike that and therefore the teacher says i know you have lived a perfect life you have no questions about this world why this is like that why that is like that why my wife doesn't listen to me this kind of dumb questions are not with you and yet bhuya and yet tapasa you have to live here tapasa under austerities brahmacharyena celibacy and shraddhaya with the shraddha with the faith samvatsaram samvatsatha now live in our ashram for one full year following all the strict discipline 
See, we go to the teacher with a suspicion. Do you think the teacher will just tell? He also examines us. And his examination is so subtle that we will never know. But unless the student is qualified to receive the knowledge, it should never, never be given. Because this knowledge becomes more detrimental if it has fallen in the hands of the wrong people. See, it is something like you have got a gun and you give this gun to your small child who doesn't know the purpose, how to use and all that. So that gun, that power will be detrimental to him as well as all the people around him. And this is how this knowledge is never given to anybody. And second most important part, even if he gives this knowledge, there won't be a receiver because he is not qualified. This knowledge can never, never be gained by those who are objective in their approach. Therefore, Bhuja eva tapasa by tapasya, austerities. What is austerities? Austerities are very simple. Readiness to give up. I again repeat slowly. Readiness to give up our wrong notions about these four factors. Our self, world, God and spiritual practice. If we are not ready to give up our wrong notions, we are not following tapasya. Number one. Second thing, I am ready to give up, but what can I do? I just cannot get up in the morning. So not only you are ready, but you are able also. So readiness and the ability to change oneself is called as the tapasya. Because what is tapasya? Tapasya, we give away, we give up something willingly. I have given up sugar. Maybe you are having diabetes. No, I don't have diabetes. Then why have you given up? Because I am doing tapasya. I have decided no more sugar. So willingness to give up and the ability to give up. In the same manner, if we are not ready and willing and able to give up our wrong notions, we are not practicing tapasya. Therefore, <coughs> tapasa brahmacharyena. Brahmacharyena, till such time we are indulgent in this world, we can never have the single-pointedness and the uh, strength that is required for <coughs> the study and contemplation. And the third, Shraddhaya. Shraddha again in four places. First, Shraddha in the God, Lord. Shraddha in the scriptures, Shraddha in the teacher, and Shraddha in oneself. Shraddha means blind faith. We have to have the blind faith. And faith is always blind. When I know something, I don't require faith. When I don't know, then I require faith. So faith is not a weakness, it is a strength. See? Like you know, when we get into the flight, do we know whether the flight is going to land or crash? And yet we get into it. On what strength? Only on the strength of the Shraddha. Therefore, this Shraddha is essential. Shraddha in God what? Ishvara Nugraha Deva Pumsa Madhvita Vasana. If we are attracted towards the inquiry into the reality, well, let us not have the arrogance that I am studying Upanishad, I have studied this, I have studied that. That arrogance is the one biggest obstacle. If we are able to get in this mode, it is the divine grace, not our effort. See, friends, like many people ask us this question. Pamidi, since how long you are on this path? So we tell them. You want a story? I can make a story. Autobiography of a Dumbo. I give a big story. And if you want to know the truth, the truth is divine will. See? If I am going to talk, I have done this thing, I have done that thing. So earlier I was a uh, bhogi, now I is a yogi. Earlier I was a rogi, now I am a healthy. The I is still maintained. Vedanta helps us getting liberation from I. 
not getting liberation to the I. We have to get freedom from this I. Therefore, if we are able to walk the spiritual path, it is divine grace. Shraddha is the divine principle. Second thing, Shraddha in the scriptures. Bhagavan Shankara <coughs> writes in one place about Shraddha. Scriptures are so much concerned about the upliftment and uh, liberation of the disciples or the seekers that if you put thousands of parents put together for one child, how much will be their concern? Much more than that is the concern of the scriptures. Shruti Mata, therefore, it is called as. The scriptures are like the mother. So, faith in the scriptures. And by scriptures, we clearly mean Upanishad. And in the third thing, faith in the teacher. Why teacher? faith in the teacher? Because he is not doing it as a bread-earning profession. Please remember this. Brahma Vidya is never sold in exchange for money. It is a totally a wrong perspective to take money and then teach. Then the teacher will not be a teacher, he will be a tutor. And a tutor can be dictated. But a spiritual master cannot be dictated because you can't hire him out. Therefore, the teacher alone gives us this knowledge from the scriptures, faith in the teacher, and the fourth and the most important thing, faith in oneself. Yes, we can. It is not impossible. Many of us, we have got this wrong notion about our abilities. I don't think I can do anything. You know, I am good for... No, no, we can. Every one of us can. So, Shraddhaya, Samvatsara, Samvatsata. So, live here for one full year. And after you have lived here, then you will be purified. You know, like before doing the operation. So, the doctor tells, no, for 24 hours, don't eat anything, don't drink water. And then you are given a nice bath and cleaning that particular part of the body where they will be doing the butchery. And when this is being done, then the operation is performed. So for an ordinary physical body operation, we require so much of preparation. But when it comes to the study of scriptures, we feel that anybody can just lift the book, put the legs on the table, have a cup of tea in the right hand, and in the left hand the book, and we want to study the scriptures, it can never, never happen. Dear friends. So in this manner, you stay here, and then yatha kamam prashnan vrachata, and after that, you may ask what your questions you have, and yadi vijnya syamaha, and if I know the answers to your question, I may reply that means there is no guarantee. I may reply, yadi vijnya syamaha, sarvam hamo vakshamaiti. Then I shall tell you, and if I do not know, I will say, I am sorry, I am not going to bluff. In this manner, <coughs> now the first student approaches. Atha kabandhi katyayanaha upetya papracha bhagavan kuto hava ima praja prajayanta iti. So the first student, the kabandhi katyayana, he 